You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world and the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Good evening and welcome to the Paranormal Pop-Up Show. My name is Kerry Greenaway and before we begin and I introduce who's on with me tonight, I'd like to just put a public disclaimer out. This will not be suitable for children and it probably is going to be explicit. All right, so who have I got in the studio with me tonight? Well, all the way from across the pond, I've got the most awesome Jay Lynch in the studio. Good evening, Jay. You had me scared for a minute. You said awesome to my name at the same time. But hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. We also have the lovely, beautiful Gemma is in the studio tonight. Hi, guys. And not only that, we have a fourth person in the studio, Mr. Carl Hutchinson. Good evening. He's so calm oh, that was at the very moment. Posh. Good evening. Good evening good and evening. welcome. <laughs> 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 and so it begins. Yes. <laughs> Ten seconds in. <laughs> okay, guys. So we've had Thanksgiving across the pond recently, haven't we? Yesterday was it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All the food, yeah, still recovering. So the guts <laughs> are playing you up today, are they? I just no. Today's the day that I normally stay hidden away from society and hidden away from people because it's it's idiot day today. Explain. The whole Black Friday bull crap. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got to love a bit of shopping on a Black Friday. No. Well, to be fair, I prefer shopping on a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm not particularly fussy. Well, yeah. If I'm honest. Yeah, that's true. If you've got money, it's lovely to go shopping. If shopping needs to be done, let's just do it. You know, why do we all have to go <laughs> slightly crazy because we've put the word black in front of Friday? Uh, it's, it's become an absolute asinine thing over here i mean they'll put things on it ridiculously reduced prices but we'll have four but they'll have three thousand people lined up out the store waiting mm-hmm. out front to be the first one to run there and beat each other half to death for those four items that's actually going to sell it's just it's, it's <laughs> ludicrous it's asinine i just, i don't participate no so let's not- have a okay so let's get off shopping <laughs> it's not really where we wanted to go with that show but you know i, I, do, I, do, I am going to go shopping later there's a local uh spirit house that makes fresh vodkas and and whiskeys and and moonshine i'm gonna go over there they got to sell on there so i'm going shopping later for booze excellent <laughs> at least we brought spirits into the conversation exactly spirits for the spirit. so my beautiful people uh, let's go back to thanksgiving to start with so what are we thankful for that's over <laughs> <laughs> not being sober sorry Carl my gin. not being sober yeah okay. <laughs> then it's over I mean <clears throat> that is yeah. such a controversial holiday over here anymore it is it a controversial is one isn't it Yes, it's it is. Politically like incorrect, I think, is the yes. expression, right? Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, let's just have another holiday where we can. I actually celebrated Canadians uh, Thanksgiving this year because we have a friend that's Canadian now, so it was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just an excuse for like an extra day, though? Oh man, I love it over here because well, I work I work for a uh, union, so I got today off also. So oh. my wife only got yesterday off. I've got a four-day weekend out of it. So 
whatever you guys want to do to call it a holiday, give me three and four days <laughs> off. Of okay? call, baby. Give it a name. It's, it's my we'll ex. Call, let's call it a win-win. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, four day weekend. I get paid for it. Yeah, party time. <laughs> uh, so, Carl, what are you thankful for apart from being drunk? I'm not drunk yet. yet. Um, <laughs> um, that's a difficult one, really, because there's a there's a lot of things. Particularly with the year I've had, there's a lot of things that I'm thankful for, and there's a lot of things that I'd like to go back over. But just 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 being me, really, and just. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thankful for just being me. I am because at the end of the day, there's there's there's, there's, there's points that I couldn't um, I could be I could be a different person, and luckily with the people around me that have been there to pick me up, put me out, dust me down, stand me up again after I'd fallen. I'm just thankful that I'm still me and still the the person I am. Hmm. Gemma, what are you thankful for, darling? My kids. Pop up the bras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Although I'd say more padding, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, my kids, in all seriousness, my kids, because, you know, pretty much similar to what Carl's just said, without them, I don't think I would be me. Good answer. Well, the, the point of all of this, basically, is it's not being anything material has it it's all it's all about the people that surround you and prop you up and one of the things um when you are part of a a team a paranormal team this is is that family feel that you get when you join a team isn't it It, that that's what keeps you going that's who helps you through the hard times and they become more than just a paranormal team that is just like a hobby group they become part of your close-knit set of friends don't they Oh, absolutely, and it doesn't have to be a paranormal team. It can be, um, it can be a group. It can be social media friends. It can be just individuals that you've met over the time. It doesn't have to be a paranormal group. You could meet those people through the paranormal, and you sort of built up interest. It doesn't have to be just a team as such. That's very true. Now I know Jay. You have a very close knit team, don't you? Well, yeah, since it's my wife and me, on the hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bigger team than that. Uh, well, we're we're part of three other teams, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, for actual hindsight, paranormal, it's just really me and Teresa. So it's kind of like hard to split that team up unless I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think that's going to happen anytime soon. No, yeah, but with so, the paranormal so mysteries. I'd also be quite thankful for camouflage as well. <laughs> Could you tell? I have Could you tell? I have never seen you not out of camouflage. <laughs> and my, and, and, but I'm not wearing my, what do you guys call them, dungaree and braces, which we call yeah, them bib overalls. Yeah. I'm not wearing my bib overalls today. Yeah. I'm not wearing my bib overalls. So well, give yeah, me a break. You, you do like a bit of camouflage. Yes. It's, it's, it's my favorite color. <laughs> I have to say, when, when I first met Jay, he said he was wearing his bibs. And I was thinking... Because in the UK, obviously, a bib is, is baby a bib. baby bib. Yeah, right, yeah. And I'm thinking, <laughs> he's not that bad, surely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, how old is he to be sat with a bib? <laughs> exactly. Well, and there was an occasion where the guys, um, I wasn't involved in it, but the guys were doing an investigation at De Grey Street and they'd Skype oh team, God. Jay and Teresa, and he was talking about suspenders. And I'm thinking, well, he's uh, talking... Teresa remoted in. So he's wearing suspenders uh-huh. and a bib. It conjures up a <laughs> mental well, image, is, guys. That is an image in the UK. There's a lot of people probably listening to this going, a bib and suspenders. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but when, when we were doing the Degray Street, Teresa actually remoted in and she said that she could see the guy that was there and hit that he was mad because they could see him in his suspenders, which suspenders for us are... Suspenders that hold your pants up. And, of course, everybody on that side just cracked up. Paul and all of them just absolutely just cracked up laughing. And we're like, why? You know, and then they told us what suspenders <laughs> was over there. And we're like, well, I'd be a little bit pissed, too, if somebody saw me wearing suspenders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Puts a whole spin onto Grey Street is all I'm saying. So it was it was, it was was an interesting situation. <laughs> and this but is we've when... had that. 
Uh huh. That's been a good thing though with with doing these uh, shows together and doing you know the, the American side with the English side and the UK and things. To have those differences has actually been so much enjoyable. It really has. It's made some great radio moments. Yeah, I mean, the translation can be a bit lost from time to time, you know, oh. such as your bib and your suspenders, you know. <laughs> that, that, that can make for awkward listening, I suppose. Uh, yeah, and, and you especially... need to reverse that as well when you've got the some of the English uh, mm. expressions yeah. where the guys from the other side of the pond go, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 I've had and, that. And I think, I've had that I think my... the, Yeah. My favorite one, though, is I saw Carrie's face turn red. <coughs> it's absolutely hysterical because she, we just went on air. We were doing the uh, Parasorts UK radio show on Paramania Radio. And she said, what have you been all doing all day? And I just said, goofing off, which for us means just doing nothing. And she's, her face went beat. Look at her turn red now talking about it. If you guys had been be cracking up. She's like, that's not something you want to say over here. <laughs> you know, goofing off all day. I'm like. I, and then after we went off first, she explained to me, and I'm like, well. <laughs> That's a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's been quite entertaining. It really has. It's, and it's it's made for some great moments for for me and a lot of great memories, getting to work with Carrie and Carl and a bunch of others and stuff over there. I, I've enjoyed the hell out of that part of it. Who can really embarrass the other person by accident? Complete accident. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Um, like, <laughs> the the, I remember we did a show on portals, um, and I, I have some words I can't say properly. Like hospital is one, portal is another, um, and I, all the whole show I was calling it portal, wasn't I? Rather and than what about portal. The, what about the Alapaca Mountains? The Alapaca Mountains, yeah, not the Alapaca yeah, so the Appalachian, Appalachian. yeah. What's the, um, what's the uh, full light structure camera Oh, the posh selfie stick. <laughs> oh no, the stick man thingy. Stick man thingy. See, I get educated. It's great, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what these shows are really more for. They they are. They're, they are such a point for education and stuff and communication. It is absolutely amazing. And people need to take more advantage of it. They it's really nice do. to unwind as well. I mean, let's be honest. We spend so much time being serious and focusing on, on our own tasks that, you know... When we can come together like tonight, it's it's quite nice. Absolutely, and, and if you ever want serious, Jim, do not ever go check out some of the stuff that me and Rick put up there on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that, Rick Rose. I mean, there's some videos of, of Lady in White, uh, and uh-huh. um, uh, we did some urban legends over here that we filmed. You'll never be the same. <laughs> I did share those to the Parasearch Radio group page. If you you might have to scroll back a bit actually to catch those now, um, but they're the funniest. And actually, did you I think like you got a degree. I loved it. Scott oh, Tepperman howling, was mate. Howling. Scott Tepperman was our dean. Was he? Yes, we got. We are now certified paranormal investigators through POS Academy. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy anything in America. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, we made this all. It's, it's hysterical. And Scott Tepperman actually got involved with this stuff. So you start getting people from Ghost Hunters International start helping you film your spoof videos and having fun. You're, you're doing something right. You're doing something yeah. good, aren't you? And isn't it fun though? You know, at the end of the day, for us guys, <coughs> our, us normal people, it's a hobby, <laughs> right? Normal. I'm not sure where Terry is tonight. (laughs) Who are you talking to? A little more wine, a little more wine. Yeah, you know, we're going normal right now. Uh, Well, we're all normal in the paranormal field. We might be a little weird to other people, but to each other, we're quite normal, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll just roll with it, yeah. (laughs) Roll with it. We'll roll with that. God, it's like (laughs) herding sheep, everybody. Herding sheep. Oh, my God. I can't even think where I was going with that thought pattern now. (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to keep it on target, but it's not, is it? It's not going off in tangents already. But laughter, that's where we was going. Laughter, isn't it? It's, it's about having fun, even though you're doing something, um, you know, quite serious, really. You know, you've got to have fun in the field. I think at the end of the day, it's a bit like when um, anybody in the UK uh, goes into a pub or over in the States goes into a bar, you walk into a bar and it's deathly quiet. Nobody's talking, nobody's having a laugh. You're normally on your heels out that door. Yeah. The door's open. 
when you walk in, there's a good vibe, there's good music, there's a bit of a laughter. You have a good time. And I think in the paranormal field, you've got to have that because, yes, when you have to be serious, you have to be serious. But, it, to be truthfully honest, it can be the most boringest thing you can be doing. You could be sitting in a building for seven and a half hours, freezing your what's off on a cold, <laughs> whatever. You have to have be able to break that silence. You have to basically be able to have a laugh. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's the atmosphere. You're yeah. creating the atmosphere that everybody else is going to feed off, whether that be spirits or humans, yeah. whatever. You still need that good atmosphere for people to be able to thrive. Exactly. Yeah. I, I tell you what, if I walked into a bar and it was definitely quiet and nobody was talking, I wouldn't stay there long, and I think that's the same with the spirits. Well, I think so I'd get kicked out within 10 seconds anyway. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to light that place up. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd walk in and they'd be like, oh, get her out. <laughs> Put it this way, when I'm on that other side, I'm going to be lighting things up left, right, and center. Yeah, I know I am. I, I tell people all the time, that it's like, what do you paranormal best guess? If you really want to know the truth, I want to know if there's a way to stay, because if there is, I'm sticking around, because I want to mess with everybody. Nobody will... Carrie, your showers will never be the same. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> well, you laugh for Jimmy. You're next. <laughs> fine Sloppy by me, seconds. Jay, fine by me, love. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the kid. I will be the one that knocks the rice ball of some little boy's hand in China just as mom and dad whip him for spilling his rice. I, th- I, that will be me. I will stick around and mess with the world forever as long as I can stay. I always said that uh, back in Toot Deer when we used to have the girly nights um, watching Most Haunted, and this is going back a long time. Um, all my mates used to come around. We used to watch the TV programs and, and get scared, believe it or not. God, back in the day. I mean, back in the day. And um, we used to say that. We used to say, like, there's no way we would pass over if we could rattle chains and, and knock things off tables just for the sheer hell oh. of it. What are that? Can you imagine though? Right, there's so many paranormal people out there now on the, you know, in in the field that if we all kind of like do as we say we're going to do, the future of paranormal investigating is going to be bloody awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? I think I, I think you've probably got more chance of everybody in the paranormal field being in a field. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> having a rave <laughs> really difficult. I mean, we we've all got aspirations that we want to to live up to, but reality for a lot of people is very different. Mm-hmm. Mm. If you've not oh, got if you've not got the cash to throw at it, I mean, I I know myself. I've spent an absolute arm and a leg on equipment and then replacing equipment and trying to, to run events and things like that. You know, I've, I've been there. I've done that. I've got the T-shirt and I've got the mental scars from it, to be fair. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not how people perceive it to be. It's not a money-making scheme. You're not going to become famous by being a paranormal investigator. If you're going to do I it, quit. you need... You know, <laughs> sorry, Jay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but no, I mean... Some people, yeah, it happens for, but you know, if that's the only reason you're in this paranormal field, then you need to move out. Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. If you think you're you, you're going to get into this field just because you've got a black t-shirt, a black baseball cap, and you carry a silver case, <gasps> I've got a hoodie as well. Does that count? Uh, hoodie, anything that's black, and you think you're going to be the next whatever, and you think you're going to be driving around in that Lamborghini. You're going to be doing a day in the life and all this sort of malarkey. You are in the wrong field. There's very few people that make it in this field. Yeah, to massively. A point. Yes, there's people out there that work bloody hard to to succeed that are successful, but they're not making a living out of it. No. That they've got another job or another job. You're exactly. You're not going to be the next Zach Bagans. You're not going to be the next Aaron Gould. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to be the next Yvette Fielding or the Carl Beatty of this life that, may, that have earned an absolute fortune out of this industry. But they were in TV before they, they t- hit the most haunted thing. You know, they, they already yeah. had, they were already, already established in their field with the right contacts. They didn't just, like, come out of nowhere 
and oh, set yeah. up a YouTube channel, go out investigating for a couple right. of nights. They actually yeah. had the contacts, and so she was well known in her own right. She already had her yeah. own following. When, you, when you're talking about those those guys, and they they were for us in the UK, they were the staple. That that's what got a lot of. There won't be many people. There there there'd be people out there that will bite their tongue to say yes. The reason they got into this field is because of most forms. I wouldn't. I, I will openly I will, admit I, that. I, I, yeah, I've done so many interviews and said, how did you get into it? Yes, I was brought up on a scary story and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> I've had experiences. But I remember walking in on a Friday night or on a Thursday night when most of the live was on, you'd set your laptop off from the yeah. CCTV cameras. You couldn't do anything. Don't people good. still do that? Let's yeah, be yeah, real. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 they're not my favourite people, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, and I'm pretty sure that they're not going to lose sleep over me saying it either. So, you know, nobody's nobody's crying here. But I've worked with them, and that's where the difference lies. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt, moved on, started my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you find something that gives you that spark mm. that thinks, I'll tell you what, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Not because you want to be on TV, not because you want to be famous, not because you want to be a pin-up boy or have fangirls running around throwing Oh, Lord, pants. have you seen me, Carl? I'm never going to be a pin-up boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen the blessed photo, so there is, there is something. Um, I told you I shared it everywhere, love. <laughs> you know, you didn't have to share it, I found it. Um, <laughs> Well, you, you have to, you have to think that you, you you see these things, you see these shows on the TV. It sparks an interest in people. That then you've got that thing. How you progress from there? How you learn from that? Yes, I still watch most films, and I'm happy to say I still watch it, but not because of the show, because of the locations. Yeah, that is my thing. It's like Ghost Adventures, like all the different shows that. Are <coughs> Um, is is mainly how I watch for the for the locations and seeing these amazing locations and going. I've been there. Mm. I've been quite lucky over the years because of certain things that I've done. But yeah. I've managed to. These doors have opened, and I've got into locations which you wouldn't have got into. Yeah. Before. You see, I I agree with that, Carl. Completely agree with that. Mm. I'm pretty much like you. I've been so lucky that I've been able to visit the amount of locations. And the locations themselves, because some of them, you would, you, like you say, you wouldn't be able to get into. For love and money, you just wouldn't. Yeah, okay. So I got in, I got in, in, like, a few years ago when I was doing public events, many, many years ago, when I was doing public events. We got contacted, our team got contacted by the Royal Navy to go down to Portsmouth to go and investigate the Rotunda in Portsmouth, which is this, basically, in... Portsmouth Harbour, the, the military base, there's this shaft which where they go in and they on multi levels. And we got asked because they'd seen what we'd been doing on whatever, and they've heard this. They asked us. I would have never been able to do that. Back mm-hmm. in the day. I often have walked in and said, "Excuse me, can I come into your high security place and can I be <laughs> in the dark with a torch?" <laughs> So and listen. Gone, right, okay. Let's get the white van. Let's put the straight jacket on. Let's cart this bloke up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jay, is there a location that you've been invited into, then, in the similar circumstances? Oh, I, <clears throat> every place that we've been here lately, it was because of us, our, our being involved with so much. There's, there was no way we've been allowed to get into Hell's Damn Bar or Collingwood Art Center and stuff. I mean, just, I just keep naming them. We have, <clears throat> We've been blessed the last three months. Into the, the dam, Hell's Bar. Yeah, Hell's Bar Dam. We were just there. We had an event there. We actually had. A, we thought we wouldn't get anybody to show up. They actually had over a sellout for us to be there, uh, and all the proceeds went to charity. So we had a great time. And because that got and, that got really affected by uh, the storms a couple of years ago, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and they've had and they've had a lot of bad information there. Uh, Ghost Adventures was there, and the people that ran it at that time had told a bunch of false stories, and they're trying to rebound from that the people that run it now and mm. there's all kinds of stuff going on and i mean osph i can just keep naming places that we've been that and and we're blessed i mean like i said till about two weeks ago we were on the road all of september october and november we were on the road every weekend traveling doing something some event somewhere here and it was it was great 
Uh, yeah. I'm all out. I watch, I watch your lives, a lot of driving videos. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one good the thing. Things. That's the good thing about socials, though, isn't it? You can, you know, much as we cane it, we get to see, like, people we know going on their way to investigations or something like that. I love that. The best, see, the best thing about the social thing is this. I'm gonna, people won't see this on the radio, but you're driving in your car and you get this shot like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking and it's just like sorry just to explain to people that obviously can't see it you get that funny shot of the camera that's on the dashboard because you can't obviously hold your camera and it's like up your left nostril you drive. <laughs> we've been we've been blessed with the way i'm with with carrie's uh, leaning to earlier with the paranormal mysteries that we're doing with jason and, and rick and Teresa and myself and filming and stuff for asy tv we've been blessed that that we've the way we're doing it is that way, though. We are actually making those road trip parts where we have fun on the road, going to these locations, driving five, six, 12 hours. Mm. We're putting that as part of this, the thing because it is actually a part of it. Yeah, we're, we're, absolutely. We're willing to show there's so much more involved than just you show up and you go in this dark place and this is it. No, there's hours. I've not done a live on the way to a location for a long time, but it used to be a regular thing. Every time I was going out, I would pop up on live on Facebook and be like, you'll never guess where I'm going. <laughs> you know, the, the excitement for the night starts building en route. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Well, we, like, well, Karen was talking about the last time we was, come back, we was coming back from Hell's Bar Dam. And me and Jason were in one vehicle, and Teresa and Rick and, uh, and our other friend, Tina Pera Duchesne, she's out of Canada. She's that wonderful gifted psychic medium. But they were in another vehicle. And me and Jason started doing that song Baby Shark and dancing to it while oh, we were God. driving down the Scott highway. I love a bit of Baby Shark. So then we had, <laughs> we, but we made Rick and him do it next. So we were actually live simulcasting with each other, each car dancing to, singing that song. Just stupid things like that. But that's, that's what we, we bring a lot of energy to our investigations. Yeah. We don't I bring. That proves it's real. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not, in that, you're not in that cotton wool bubble. You're not in that bubble wrap where you basically private jet there you then get there you just get out your limo i'm here i'm in the bar oh, and, yeah. the back of your limo, and then you shoot off you that so you're basically driving yeah. like you take yeah. a couple of hours you're getting out looking like a dog's dinner or like you've had no sleep you go yep. on a seven hour investigation but you're still having a laugh you're still interacting and i think that's what, what people like to see People like to see the real investigations. Exactly. So what, but a lot of that is, is cut off. A lot of that is cut off on, on TV shows, though. Whereas when you do a live on Facebook or through social media platforms, you actually get to see a lot more. Yeah. No, it's, that's what we're working with. Uh, and Carrie knows them. Uh, Vinny and Luke, the Wrestling with Ghosts, they're, they're starting up ASY TV. is now becoming ASY Paranormal TV. And it's it's a, it's a streaming network on, on Roku network systems, but they're wanting to give people that chance to do it their way. And we're self-producing. We're doing everything ourselves, and and we're allowed to put that in there. We're, we're showing it our style, how we do things. We don't ever – I've eight years been doing this. I can't count the locations we've been to. I've still not committed anything evil or malevolent. Grumpy, but – we go along the theory that we put our positive energy out there. I think if you go looking for negative, you find negative. Yeah. You want to find bad things, you'll find bad things. So we bring our personalities into it. Our Me and Rick have a warped sense of humor. We we have fun with that, and we use that when we investigate. To me, I call it the Monsters, Inc. theory. If you watch that movie, at the end of it, they do all the things for scares for energy. Yeah. But at the end, they find out that laughter brought more energy than what terror did. It's the same thing. If the majority of the world of the population is positive and good people – why all of a sudden when we're dead, everybody thinks we're all evil and benevolent? It doesn't add up. It doesn't calculate. Hold on. We talked about this because Uh-oh. it's about how you approach things, isn't it? Because you had a situation, Jay, where you found a creeper. There was a creeper. Now, most people, if they would come across <laughs> oh, that situation, God, would have walked away, wouldn't they? And no, we were, we were at, yeah, we were at Randolph County Infirmary here in Randolph County, Indiana, an old infirmary, an asylum. It was a crawler, and uh, I actually got right by it, right where it was at, and I got down on my knees and up myself up to it and told them they could come make contact with me. And when it did feel like I fucked something touched my chest, they were filming with the fleer. As soon as I said, "Man, it's, it's touching me," 
they said my image disappeared. And I, we saw it on the video. My image just went completely black. And like a black blob went over where I was at. And I no longer gave off a heat signature where I was at. And when I said it was moving away, I started being seen again. And actually, they caught it on, on the recording of it and stuff. We haven't put it out there yet. But it was when it left me, it was no longer crawling. It actually walked away. It was like it had regained its humanity, that somebody had actually respected it enough to, to recognize it, and it gave it its energy back and its humanity back. It was, a, it was an amazing experience. Would I do it again? Probably, but I have to be in the right situation. If I felt threatened, I would have never done that, but I felt no threat at all. I felt like there was something there that just needed to be a piece. So I got on my knees and opened myself up to it, right? Here I am. You can make contact with me. It is about how you feel about it, isn't it? Absolutely. It's like the uh-huh. Ouija board over here. That's that's a taboo. Don't don't we've actually found a few places now that allow us to use the Ouija board and we've been working with them more. But over here, if you use any kind of spirit board or talking board, oh my god, the devil's work. Oh my god, get on yourself. So. Watch <laughs> Put the movie down. Well, Ashley Nib has just joined us, I believe, Ashley. I literally took a swig of tea at that point. <laughs> like, oh, really? <laughs> now, try and have a drink. Yeah, oh, my God. I love the fact he's on tea. The rest of us are on something a little different, shall we say. Oh, he figured he was safe. He's like, oh, Jay's bad one. I got plenty of time to take a drink. <laughs> okay, so going back to the Ouija um, talking board scenario. Now, Sage had the lovely Karen Dahlman. Correct. Yeah. She was there, wasn't she? Um, and she's from the Talking Board Historical Society. Mm-hmm. Now, what was her take on that? Well, the Ouija board, Talking Board, or whatever you want to call it, is just a board to communicate. It doesn't summer the devil. It doesn't summer Zozo. <laughs> Damn it, I Zozo. want Zozo. I want Charlie Charlie. <laughs> actually, actually, let me try that right now. Let it's me get my communica- two pencils. It's just a communication tool which you can use to... And it doesn't have to be... I learned an awful lot because I always thought that you basically had to have a proper board, you know, have a proper plan share, all this sort of stuff, putting the energy in, it had to be this, that, and the other. But talking to Karen and watching how Karen works while during stage, you don't need any of that. You can make your own board. You can put it on a bit of cardboard. She was basically expressing it's it's how it's the thought process and it's the energy you're putting into it to communicate. If you want evil, you will bring in evil. If you want good, you will bring. So it's your mental attitude how you use it. It's I not totally gonna, agree. It's not no, I agree with you. Right? I agree with you. And now we talk about Ouija boards, right? And like you say, it's the misunderstanding that you need a proper board with a planchette. But how many times as kids did we write letters on pieces of paper and use a glass or something like that to, to do it with? Absolutely. And it's also I've the, still the, done the, it recently. I don't, want to do, I, want, I don't want to say it, but it's also the, the Hollywood view of the board where you think you, everybody <laughs> turns on the urban myth scenario where... Oh, I knew a friend of a friend of a friend who had a Ouija board and they'd never closed it down thing and it called, it said death and then two days later they died. Uh-huh. Well, I what should be dead loaded, going on that. Well, loaded. I should be dead going on that. Yeah. When what I was in senior, time? when I'm not senior school, um, I was in primary school and... <laughs> That's a long time ago. As you do. Oh, you cheeky monkey. That was last... He did not just go there. That was only about five years Ow. ago. Is that you, Cole? It's my 21st birthday soon. I'd just like to add. Was it Ford or was it like Slayton? (laughs) 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 It's my 21st birthday soon, I'll have you know. So I'll I'll retract that statement. It was five years ago. Anyway. I remember riding my dinosaur to school. Just saying. Oh, my God. So... (laughs) Um, yeah, we, we, me and my friend, we were playing around with it, and it was Kill Kerry tonight. And I cycled home from my house so quick, I probably could have killed myself under a car that night because I was scared crapless. And um, so, yeah, if you believe everything you... I swear to God she was pushing that glass, you know. <laughs> Funny, that. That's not unheard of either, is it? Let's be realistic. Oh, I was going to say, if, if I'd been in the wrong place at the wrong time, the way I heard it at home that night... 
because obviously I'm young. We've been playing with something. I mean, I remember doing Bloody Mary as well. We were. <laughs> yes. Yeah? yeah? When you were kids. Yeah. We just did Bloody Mary and filmed it for you. Well, I know. I saw that. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I mean, and I'm talking, I must be, what, nine, ten? We were playing these kind of games. And, you know, these are games we talk about now in regards to, we've done paranormal shows on them. They still get researched. They still get talked about. The history behind them, you know, so what is the Bloody Mary? What is the inspiration for that? These things still are. Ouija board is no no different, is it? Do you think that on the same sort of level as the Ouija board and people's building this up and making it worse than it is, do you think... And I don't know why I'm throwing this out there because I'm probably just because I just felt like throwing the hand grenade into the... Into the, <laughs> the um, do it! Go on, Carl. <laughs> the Ouija board and people basically build it up as a negative thing. You're also saying that if you've done it, you panic and you go this, that and the other. Do you think that sometimes when you've got scenarios like the Boogie Man, the Candy Man, Bloody Mary, the Slender Man, do you reckon that sort of thing is sort of linked? What, like a mental manifestation yeah. of your, like, belief system, I suppose? Yeah. But, yeah. So, Ashley. You're running home because <laughs> Ashley near been to the room. when you believe the Slender Man is chasing you. If you've got, if, if it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to go a different angle this now than this. So if, if you've got enough information on something, so you're an understanding of something, all that kind of stuff, like a belief system as well, you build up that enough information, then you could theoretically misconstrue certain events to be certain things or like paradalia and all that kind of stuff. You could think you're seeing the Slender Man or umpteen different kind of bad bad spirits and that kind of stuff and give them certain names because you believe that's what you're seeing and that kind of stuff. And if you're in that scenario as well, when you're going through that kind of aspect of it, you could quite easily go along with the situation, so to speak, especially in a location as well that's got a history for having, you know, associations with certain spirits, certain, uh, you know, uh, urban legends, if you like, that kind of stuff. So then it equally becomes that, it, it becomes a norm. We uh, become, become socially accepted within our, within our groups and then we end up just going along with it. And the same with the Ouija board as well. If a group are doing it and it kind of gets moved around and it goes down a darker path, often people will carry on doing it because it's, it, it, raises, it raises the bar a little it makes it a bit more interesting for them. So they carry on going down that route. So I think, um, and, I, and I've seen it firsthand where people have got more excited about communication from a Ouija board when it's darker and, it's, <laughs> and it kind of like throws them completely. And they're like, and then they carry on with it though because they yeah, want to know more. Yeah, it throws more. them, but yeah, <laughs> it throws them. But then that the adrenaline kicks in, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, there's a demon in the house!" <laughs> Hello, Mister Demon. How are you today? <laughs> exactly. I'm <Hello>. good. <laughs> it's that, quickly it's shut that the board down. <laughs> No, it's not. It's, it's exactly that. It's that adrenaline rush that raises one. Adrenaline is a drug as well, as well, isn't it? It's a natural drug uh-huh. within us. And we want we want more of it, so you continue to drive on that, and that's where you, you you kind of go along with it, and more and more and more, and push it more and more and more, and that's where that envelope gets pushed a little bit, I think, sometimes. But whether that's an actual demon, and I'm air quoting here for people in the radio world, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think I don't think it is from my personal perspective. <laughs> Always adding the personal perspective there. Uh, well, it's all we have got, isn't it? Let's be realistic. We've only got our personal opinions and perspectives. Very true, James. So, Jay, you have got several Ouija boards in your home. Yeah, absolutely. I've just shown off some of them. Had oh, custom made by one of my friends. Yeah? Do you want to Jason them... Arthur, he does, yeah. Mm-hmm. He does spots boards. He does custom engraved wooden boards. They're beautiful. Does wonderful work. Very detailed. Have you used them? Absolutely. What's the point in having them if I can't use them? And what's, <laughs> what's your... Um, have you had good responses? I mean, this is... A bottom line is, do you get good I've responses? I've got bumpkins. I've had nothing happen. Nothing. Teresa and, and some of them has had things, but whenever I've been involved with the board, I've had nothing happen. Nothing. Whatever. It's, it's, I don't know. Spirits don't like me, so I'm not funny. <laughs> wow. 
I have great responses on Ouija. I, I really, I, I would love, uh, we've actually uh, worked with them with uh, Robert Murch and mm-hmm. had him involved with some of them. And uh, Callie Cheryl got involved with the Talking Board Society and stuff because I want to learn more about them. I, and I want to make sure that, you know, and I don't have to just read my Parker Brother rules to find out how to open and close it. I wonder if there's really another <laughs> way to do it. So <laughs> I, I, I take nothing off the table. We investigate. That's the thing with working with the, the other three people that I work with. If one person wants to do it, the other ones who do will step up. The ones that don't step aside, we do not ridicule anything. We take nothing off the table. There is no limits with us. That gets us in some trouble with a lot of people because we will push those limits. You, Carrie, you've seen a lot with us. Uh, me and Rick stay in a lot of trouble. Uh, it's just having that, like you were talking about earlier, having that people around you that you can trust and rely on like that to know that they have your back, period, is, is phenomenal. I mean, we'll look at each other and go, I think that's stupid, but okay, I'll follow you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the case with the Ouija boards. Teresa and, him and Jason and, uh, do a lot of work with them. Every time I've involved with them, I've got nothing, absolutely nothing. So, But I'll keep trying. Kyle? Yes? Have you used a Ouija board? <laughs> yes. You've called? <laughs> yes. You, you and what little? kind of response do you get on a Ouija board? Um, I... Personally, I've only ever really used it more properly. Ah, um, properly? As in, I've, I, I don't know. I normally stay off them. Um, For what you scared? I, like I was going to say, you scared you're going to summon a demon there, Carl? Not really. Not really. <laughs> no. I just, I, I'm, I'm like, an, I'm sort of a, a person who likes to observe, so. I like to see how it works and see people using it properly and try and look at look at the scenarios and how they're using it. Uh, but the times I have used them, um, yes, I like certain information that has come out on them that nobody knows about me personally. Yeah, that's the sort of interesting stuff. So, but I think, like Jay said, you've got to be able to trust the people on the board. I agree. Yeah, I think that I think that's the I think that's the biggest key about it is, um, yes, I've I've seen so many Ouija board sessions in public events and etc. and all that sort of stuff where <coughs> I've stood back and just gone, okay, you're 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 answering your own questions etc. Um, but I think when you can trust the people on the board not to basically be doing anything <sighs> silly or not nefarious. Even yeah, I think you've just got to keep that in mind Mind on it. So I've used them. Would I, uh, do I like using them? I don't know, but after the recent time at Sage, talking to Karen and obviously knowing Robert Murch, um, I'd like to sort of, explore that field a little bit more so so speaking to these people then that are um shall we call them professionals in spirit boards ouija boards whatever you want to call them Mm -hmm. um would you say that because your knowledge has grown that's that's left you open and more willing to try it more yeah on a personal level rather than an events thing i think talking to people like karen talking to people like robert merch talking to other people that um, I know in the field that use them to their best abilities, etc. It, it has sort of, because me being the technical mind person that likes to, like, not, not, likes to know how stuff works, likes to know the false positives out of equipment, when you've got a Ouija board and you've got a planchette, there's not that much working parts to it. <laughs> yeah, it's hu- open to human error, isn't it? You open know? to human error. Or and I, human I like, subconscious. I like, mm-hmm. I like to cut yep. as much of that out of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but talking to these people, watching them work in environments and seeing how they work, it has sort of gone, I have sort of then gone, stood back and gone, okay, that okay, I need to understand this more. Which is good, because it's not something that I've 
would openly admit in the past where I've gone, yes, I've got Ouija board, yes, I've got talking board, but have I, do I take, if I'm going on an investigation or doing my own thing, would I take them? No, I wouldn't. Now I'm at that point where I'm thinking, okay, possibly there is a route that I could possibly use it in some sort of environment that is a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, massively. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question for you. Oh. Tick. Oh, it's like blind date, isn't it? Well, the way they, the... Contestant number one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question you for you. Would you not? <laughs> would yeah. you or would you Why not? Why don't no. blind date to Jay first? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jay's fully aware of that concept. <laughs> so, um, okay. The questions you ask me, you know how I am. There's a couple of tips, isn't there, for using um, the Ouija board. Firstly, if you suspect that somebody is being not so honest, shall we say, get them to turn their fingers over. Yes, turn them, turn yeah. them over that way, yeah. That, that's quite a simple and effective one. I've tried that on an investigation before and caught the person right out. Yeah. This was the same person who was going, um, we thought we was catching EV, a really great EVPs and then we realised that she was uh, saying things in the background. What is the point in that, though? What is the point in paying, coming to an event, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and falsifying evidence? I personally don't understand what anybody can get out of that. Neither it, do I. I. I think sometimes there, there are people out there that, for their own reasons, that might not be understood to other people that potentially that they do these things without realising they're doing it. Yes, no, there I think there was, there. no, I think there was full realisation of what they were doing. I mean, you're subconscious on a Ouija board. Yes, I can, I can go with that theory, to be fair, Carl. I, I, I could ride with that. But making noises when catching EVPs, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that I could, I could go with that. You know, surely, surely as a human, you know if you're making a noise? We're talking about purposely saying things, right? We're not talking about, you know, the, because I've, I've been in investigations before where you, you kind of, you're doing an EVP and obviously you turn around and go, you realise you're making small sounds <laughs> in the background there, sort of thing. So I'm guessing you're talking about people oh, yeah, purposefully whispering underneath yeah. their beds, purpose, yeah. purposely. Yeah, and purposely pushing that's... the planchette as well. That, that that's that's that has to have some kind of conscious involvement, then, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. So, it, but, it, it was completely case. conscious. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> you've all it straight out. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not right. They're just. They're not helping the situation. Either. No, I got. Then again, of, I got a little annoyed. <coughs> no, that's they well, were consciously yeah, doing are, it. Yeah. Are they consciously doing it, or is it? Is it? Yeah, that's. But yeah, they, yeah, could they? They could be. <clears throat> well, there's, there is there is the idiomedia effect. That, yeah, that it explains Ouija boards and and, play, and using pendulums and things like that and dowsing rods. And, and there's a big study on to it going into the idiomedia effect. So are they consciously doing it or is it something that's affected by that and subconscious movement? No, to be fair, I'll play devil's advocate on this because these are tools that I use on a regular basis. Now, I've seen um, dowsing rods set into a block where nobody was touching them and they move. They weren't moving when we set it up. They weren't moving for ages. But when we started communicating, or trying to communicate, those dowsing rods were moving. And no one was touching them. There's no idiometer <coughs> effect or idiometer <coughs> effect involved in that. I've got fingers being pointed at me. Carl? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> no, you can put your so hand basically up. what you're saying is you have dowsing rods that are dowsing rods that mm -hmm, are in a mm -hmm. block that cannot be moved. Yes. Like, you know, but you've also then got to take into account your other environments, such as how it's set up, yep. how the floor reacts, yep. how you sit there, how mm -hmm. human movement around them can affect them, even down to the smallest movement can then affect how it's sat on whatever to move it. I don't disagree well, with you. I don't disagree with you. This was down a tunnel, which was oh, no, 10 feet below thing and no near, nearby roads. And everybody was... There, there, there wasn't that level of vibration that would have moved those. Yeah. 
yeah, they're my the personal day, dowsing ones. I know how they work. Yeah, okay, which I can understand, and if you're personal dowsing ones, but you've also then got to take, in, take into account if you are <laughs> going to say that is 100 percent being moved by whatever. I can't say that. Got to, you've got to rule out every possible, even if somebody shifts their weight. Potentially, that could cause a vibration. So, the only way. In my eyes, and I probably Ashley is probably going to agree with this. I'm hoping that it's take the human factor out is of a, it. Is is a clinical mm-hmm. confined place where there's nobody there. So I place the dowsing rods in the block in a bubble where nothing can get to it yeah. and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Except- in a laboratory. Yeah, in a lab, they've got labs that yeah. can do that too. Yeah. 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 Uh, Except- North, Northampton, Northampton's got one, haven't they? Northampton Except University. the most well. Except most spirits that I know would go, a university? I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Question. You don't really need... Is this not assumption of source, though? Spirits are communicating with us, but you're assuming that spirits are communicating with you. They might not be spirits communicating with you. It could be just telepathic interaction. It could be PK. Uh, it's, there's not necessarily that it could be anything to do with spirits. So you're, assu- you're assuming what your source is without having evidence to support it. Oh, I've got nods from all angles going yeah. on, everybody. I've got nods from all angles. I am playing devil's advocate, you understand. <laughs> But that's with everything we do here. We, we're assuming things. Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. And how many times Every have I better. said this on, on my show? You know, as much as we are knowledgeable about the world of paranormal or what we believe to be paranormal, we're not experts because nobody is. Until we pass over, how do we know what, what's beyond? True. I, I, always quote, I always quote my good friend Robin Terry on that. He says it all the time. The only thing we absolutely know about the paranormal is that we absolutely don't know anything about the paranormal. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, I, I tend and he, to owns, he owns four locations, and he will tell you that. He owns four big locations here in the States, and he will tell you that himself. But We assume that, a lot. That but thrill then on and the pursuit other side of knowledge of that, and understanding yeah. is wonderful. But on the other side of that Imagine. coin, you know, we spend a lot of time out there trying to prove that there is uh. something... I, 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 don't, I don't look for proof anymore. I truly so, don't. So what is it that you're looking for, Jay? Oh, I it sounds like a dating site, doesn't it? We're <laughs> <laughs> back to Blind uh, Date. Like long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> like a cold drink in the evening. <laughs> but, but, uh, a nice rom-com. A nice rom-com. Netflix oh, and can't. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't get Trust better me. than a rom com. I guarantee y'all's version of Netflix and chill don't mean what mine does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. 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 I on the air, the kids saying it. I don't actually know what it means. <laughs> it doesn't mean watching TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Huh? Anyway, but yeah, I just, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think that even with what, with what we're doing with our filming project, I'm not so much worried about capturing evidence it's it's we want to tell the story of, of, of the whole story that we're going the involvement of going there the location and stuff so if we capture journey. evidence this is the evidence is just the icing on the cake the story is the the location the people that we're there with how we interact everything else that's that's what we're going for and and if we get evidence and that's great but that evidence is so subjectable so mm-hmm. my thing is 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 whenever by because I come from a very, very, very closed-minded background before I got involved with the paranormal. So my thing now is is that I'm from – I'm like, I'll show you. I'll put you in places that were something I can't guarantee may or not may not happen, but go with me for a night. Go with me for three or four nights. Go with me five or six nights. Go to different locations. And if something happens that you can't explain, tell me what it is since you know everything. And they're always like, well, I don't know. I said, then you've just experienced <coughs> paranormal. Exactly, I will never yeah. say – I will never say that it's a ghost. I will never say that it's this or that because I don't know. But I will it say is the world just, of paranormal. You have just experienced something paranormal. You cannot explain it scientifically yet. Someday somebody might figure it out, but right now we don't know what the hell it is. So you did experience paranormal. You just don't know what it is paranormal-wise. I but leave you, it at that. It's paranormal. But you can only put it down to personal experience. Yeah. Any of this you can put down to personal experience. I don't but give a crap what isn't... you want. Oh, Eli, he's panic. getting all riled. But isn't that panic, what panic we keeps us in the... Oh, he's getting all riled up, everybody. <laughs> but isn't that what keeps us going? Of course the, it is. The pursuit... Yeah. Uh, me and Kelly, Cheryl talks about this all the time. I used to want answers. 
I don't want answers so much anymore is because every answer I find, I find 10,000 more questions. And I love that pursuit of knowledge and understanding. I love that pursuit of more questions. I love the fact of thinking, not outside of, I hate that term outside the box. Just think, let your mind free because the freer your mind is, the more open you are to experience. <coughs> Stop trying to know everything and just experience things and accept it for what they are. A beautiful experience. Why does it have to be defined? Why does it always have to have a definition to it? That's our thing as human beings to want to define everything and name everything. Why can't we just accept it for what it is and, and enjoy that moment and be appreciative of it? Mm-hmm. God, did I just say all that? I'm shutting up. <laughs> there you are. You're getting bollocks in the chat room, is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, bless you, can't suck. I'm turning my mic off. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'll set bear medicine walker on you. I'm telling you now. So, Brandon, um, I don't care. I, I love the, I love somebody that thinks differently than I do because that's how we learn. Yes. I will never argue with you. I will listen to you. I want to, even if I disagree with you, I want to understand what you're saying and understand why I disagree with you. And I want you to understand why I disagree with you. That's how we learn. I get named as the big redneck here in the, in the paranormal, and I get that, but. Without understanding, there's no knowledge, and without knowledge, there's no pursuit or any direction to go. It's just stupidity chasing itself, and why be that way? Yeah. yeah. Every day's a school day in the paranormal world. Yeah. I'm with you yeah. there. Yeah. Every day's a school school day. You've got, you, if you think you've learned everything, <coughs> then you might as well just get out of it. Yeah. There's yeah. Every day you learn something, and I've always said this, and I've been doing this, I've done this stupid journey that I've been on for nearly 20 odd years now and I sometimes I walk into it and I'm like, I'm like a completely new boy at school you think wow you just need to talk to somebody that's... this is the thing that I find so fascinating about the field is you could be there for donkey years you could be there for god knows how many years you've heard everything you've seen everything and then all of a sudden you meet somebody that's been in it for five minutes that goes, but have you thought about this? Yeah. Or have you thought Love about it. doing it that way? And then you go, shit. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. <laughs> um, I haven't thought about it that way. And that's yeah. how good this field is. This but is you see, that's, that's the joy of communication with other people because you get other people's perspectives, other people's opinions. Ooh. And like Jay said, you know, chatting to people is how you learn. Ooh, yeah. And that's why I love what I do is... Yes, I don't investigate as much as I want to do, and that's personally down to 90% is the reason down to me, but I love the interaction. I love the network, mm. and I love listening to people, listening to having this sort of conversation with like-minded friends, and then there's on the flip side of doing the radio, and then you look at you at conventions, or you go along and do what you do at events, you listen to people, you listen to personal experiences and how they think about it, and then you take that on board and go, I've never thought of that, I'm going to think about doing that, and then it, it just gets those synapses yeah. flying. And you start yeah, if, you, if you're not that. using it, you become very stale. Yeah. Mm. And it's the same with your research. If you research the same, same thing things. over and over and over <laughs> again, you become stale. <laughs> Jay. Have a word with yourself, young man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is my mic on again? My bad. <laughs> I was trying to be so well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> on oh, that note, <laughs> it is a pop-up show. On that note, we're actually drawing to the end <laughs> of the pop-up show. So keep open-minded oh, is basically where Yes, we... massively. You need to be open-minded. Yeah. yeah. And, and honest open respectful discussion with other people right yeah i mean on on facebook sorry i know you're trying to end the show but you know you've started something now Kerry. So oh i know i knew that it. was going to be a wrong but move on, on the social media sites <laughs> you know on. people will say Carry on. like <laughs> I, i've seen something like an orb now yes we all know that nine times out of ten it's dust but for those people that are posting those orb pictures that means a lot to them and for people to just dive on him, I'm telling you now, roo, 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 roo. okay, explain it, but explain it nicely. There's no reason to be so rude. And I think you do find a lot of rudeness in the paranormal world at the minute. I think you are absolutely correct, 
Gemma, and I think one of the biggest problems that we have at this precise moment in time, there's too many armchair experts sitting there that haven't been on an investigation for a while. Or have done one or two in the lifetime, and that's that. one or two. That or done basically none. read about yeah. stuff yeah. and think they're the expert and will poo poo anything that is put on. Paradolia is the biggest one of the things at the moment. Orbs, no, it's dust, it's moisture. Nine times out of ten, yes, it yeah. probably is. Yeah. But you have to explain it, like Gemma said, in a way that doesn't basically. Because at the end of the day, if you get told time and time again, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're thick. After a while, you're going to start believing that. Of course you are. It so just goes back to respect. Away, you, you're then going to walk back. away from it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, this I, is naturally. what I don't want to do. I don't want to stop these people who are coming into it for the first time or experience it for the first time that want to know about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because of these sad keyboard warriors... Yeah, but then on the other side of that coin, you know, I have at times been a bit of a keyboard warrior. You know, I've been speaking to people that have not been in the paranormal world for long at all. And they're going and doing house investigations and giving advice to to potential clients when they don't have a clue what they're they're 100 percent doing themselves. That's slightly different. I find that scary. People that have they've got an interest or got a passion that have taken a few photos or have been on a couple of this and got an EVP and got this, that and the other and want to know more. The ones that suddenly have seen the shows on TV, as I said earlier, got their baseball cap, got the shirt, got the hoodie, <laughs> got the case, and now they think they can just go and do house clearances. That's a completely That's, other it, It's worrying, it's scary, and I think people need to not be doing things like that and pass it on to people that do know what they're doing yeah and it, it is all about respect and it does it's not just in the paranormal field it's life in general i think mm-hmm. personally you have to give respect yeah so now i know what i was doing wrong carl thanks yeah, <laughs> yeah but you don't no, i don't worry. i don't have the yeah, black shirt exactly joe you don't have to worry you just got coffee yeah <laughs> yeah we don't Bring we don't do the, the black shirt <laughs> We don't. I don't wear camo when investigating either. We were. We are. We are. We wear neon colors. We wear the brightest things we can possibly wear. Is there a specific reason for that? T-shirts. Absolutely. So you can see. Absolutely. Because <laughs> so first you don't off, take a torch. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Like but uh, wearing, what it, what had happened when we first got started paranormal investigating? Somebody took a picture down a long hallway, and they saw they caught they thought they caught a black mass, and it ended up being me right. in a dark shirt. So we started wearing neon colors and stuff from, and we hadn't been investigating maybe six months when we used to happen. And I said, from now on, we'll all wear bright neon colors so that way we can never contaminate our video yeah. or, or pictures ever again. We will know without a shadow of a doubt it's one of those down hallway because the ghosts don't care what color you're wearing. Yeah, no, no, quite rightly so. So this was completely about capturing evidence and making sure that it was not us contaminating our own thing. You will know if it's one of us involved because you yeah. will see us. Neon yeah. pink, neon green, neon yellow, neon blue. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. God, it sounds like a there bad is, eighties there's, night. Is all I'm there's saying. There's nothing <laughs> in my wardrobe that isn't black. <laughs> I know. I was just thinking that, Joe, uh, Gemma, Joe, Gemma, there's, Gemma. There's, there's a couple of things <laughs> that they camouflage in mine. <clears throat> Yeah, you just want to blend with the background completely. You go camouflage. No, I have to say, I'm with Gemma on this. There's not an awful lot in my wardrobe that's not a dark colour. Nothing Even that it... would be appropriate for a ghost hunt anyway. No, but everything's appropriate story, for a ghost right? hunt. That's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> colours and stuff like that, like, Jed, that's actually, that's actually really good science. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they've done it before in certain investigations, like SPR and stuff like that. They've done it where they've had uh, reflective strips around the wrist and all that kind of stuff to show where they are and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, so we could go with the reflective top, top strips, James. See, no, you see, yeah, no, this is what I do anyway. I have glow sticks. Yeah. Oh. And I, I use glow sticks. Yeah. Just pop them in my shoe. Oh, yeah. Everybody's do doing, I was going to say, everybody's <laughs> doing big fish, little fish at this point. I would just like but to I add. Think- I do pop them on my sleeve or in my pocket or in my hood, you know, so just that, you know, people can see it's me coming towards them because I really do not own much that isn't black. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's just simple. To me, it's simple things like that that makes a lot of difference. And it shows people who are out to actually find or 
have an experience of the paranormal or capture evidence or people that's just out to try to capture something they can say, look what I got, look at me, look at me, look at me. There, yeah. there's... But, what, but one of the other things is people don't realize if you're all in black when you're on night vision, you look like a glowing Yeah. Because you stand it out. It turns out as white. And yeah, it shows the stains black... and it shows the <laughs> teeth The worst thing anybody could wear on an investigation is black leggings. Because in the end, it looks like you're wearing nothing on night vision. Well, and I think how cold is <laughs> for, for some Carl people, that's not bad. a lot of for time with night vision. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's some videos out there I'm going to be deleting. That was all I'm going to say. Excuse me. <laughs> so many investigations, and oh, I've man. just realised that you realise that you now look like you are wearing it. I should, I should go wearing white, because then on night vision, it'll it come up black. Cool. Yeah. But, I'm going to take my leggings back now, thanks. Yeah, take your leggings yeah. back, yeah. Yeah. And make right. sure you don't have any uh, visible panty line as well, because that stands out like a thing on my It face. really does stand out like a sore yeah. thumb, I agree. This oh. shows how long it's been since I've been on an investigation, right? <laughs> this shows, doesn't it? Anyway, no. on Sorry, that no, on that, that bombshell, don't wear black on investigations. It shows up white and visible panty line is uh, yeah. well Mind out there. Your VIP ladies, <laughs> yeah, or Best VPL even VP, B, VPL VPL yeah <laughs> VIP Best whatever. <laughs> well, it is uh, a very important person's visible panty line. <laughs> 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 on that note guys we thank you so much for listening to Parasurge Radio on your paranormal pop-up show on a Friday evening uh, thank you so much guys for joining me this conversation no doubt is going to go on to the small hours of the morning <laughs> I have no doubt of that and it will get worse because it will get drunker I would just like to say uh, th- say, say good night everybody good night <laughs> thank you for listening Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.